G'day folks, today I'm going to do a little bit of talking about casting underarm. A lot of people ask me how I do these little underarm flicks. When I'm fishing with people I often get asked that. And now I'm getting people asking me via Facebook message and stuff how you do these little underarm casts. To be quite honest it's not something that I've actually learnt. I don't know whether there's much technique to it, it's just something that I've had to do over the years because basically a lot of the creeks I fish are tiny and I just need that little underarm cast. So let's see if I can just explain it. That's not just the case of opening the bale and lobbing the lure like that. Okay, there's more to it than that. That's more of a flick than anything. Basically, like, basically, the length of line that I have out the end is dictated by the length of my rod, whether I'm standing deep in the water or high up on a bank, and how far I want to cast. I find if I don't have enough line out, I can have a little bit of line, when I let go to underarm cast, I flick it too high, like that. If I have too much line out, I'm likely to go too low or just lob it too gently. So you need to have the right amount of line out. For example, from here, I might aim for those logs over there. I'm not sure whether the camera can pick them up. That's about you know, five or six metres. I've got about 60 centimetres of line out. I normally hold the rod tip between my face and my target. That way I can swing the line in a straight line. So that's swinging backwards and forwards now. The swinging between my face, the log, my face, the log, my face, the log. So I know it's going in the right direction. I then let go of the line when I'm ready to go. But I don't just let it go because if I let it go, it won't go anywhere. Look, I let it go. It goes right there. I need to put a bit of force behind it, so I flick it. So I've got my 60 centimetres out again. I've got it swinging between my face and the snag. When I'm just about ready to launch it, I'll give it a bit of a flick, about as much as I think I need to get it to where I want it to go, which I think about, at a guess will be about that much. And look at that, there it is. It's about a foot this side of them logs. Now let me do that again. Okay, I've got about 60 to 70 centimetres of line out. I'm swinging it between my face and the log, keeping it in a straight... I'm not swinging it out to the side like this, because then it's hard to see which way it's going. I'm swinging it in a dead straight line between my face and where I want it to go. And right now I'm eyeing off where that log is hitting the water. So if I do that, I know I'm going to be straight enough. But how much power? That comes down to practice. So I'll give it a flick, but I'll give it a bit more power this time than last time. You ready? Here you goes. Flick. It's still a little bit short, but it's right up there. This is a little wild bait minnow. These are very light lure. So perhaps I need to give it a, a few more herbs, so to speak. So I get that pendulum happening. Now you'll notice before I let it go, I don't just flick it. I actually get my whole arm and use my whole arm to throw the lure. So you watch, I swing it between my face and the snag. Nice straight line. Spin back, use the arm, let go. And that's landed right up there. Now that can be adapted to various sort of scenarios. Ooh, standing here talking away and I actually had a trout follow that line then, so I'm just going to cast that out there. I had a fish follow it. It's a lot of swirls. I didn't actually see it. I didn't actually see the fish. I'll flick that back out there again. I'm just going to reel it in nice and slow and just see if he's still out there. Before I babble on too much, I want to see if I can lure this fish in. <laughs> I'll try going upstream a little bit. It could have even been a redfin or even a carp. I've seen carp up here. Sadly, it's funny in this still water like this, trout are likely to, they like to follow your lure but they're a bit clever and they don't usually hit it. In the running water, whether they've got to take it or leave it, you get a lot more strikes. But anyway, so let's just line it up, give it a few herbs. Oh, that's a little bit too big. That one's overshot the mark and hit the snag and which has caused the lure to foul. But basically I'm getting it in the right spot. Doesn't matter what sort of lure fishing or lure casting you're doing, whether you're casting hard body lures for Murray Cod or soft plastics for redfin or little minnows for trout like I am here, casting is imperative. Getting your cast accurate is the be all and end all of everything. If you can't cast, it doesn't matter what gear you're using, you won't catch fish. You can go out, you can spend top dollars on dear expensive rods and reels and get everything right, have all the bells and whistles, but if you can't cast that lure, you're still not going to catch anything. Basically, the very first thing you need to do when you're trout fishing is learn to cast, particularly underarm if you're going to be fishing these smaller streams. Once you can cast, 
once you can start landing your lure where you want it, you will start catching fish. That's when you need to upgrade to expensive gear and then catch more fish. But without knowing how to cast, casting comes first and without that accurate casting, you're not going to catch any fish. So now in an open waterway like this, if I decide I might want to cast further upstream, I can actually go overarm. I'll use underarm where possible, but in an open spot, overarm will always cast further. And that is cast right up into the, that corner up there of the hole, no worries at all. But underarm is paramount. Hypothetically, just say this is a little hole and a little creek, and I just want to get into that corner. I'll line it up between the eye and where I want it to go, nice straight line, gentle little flick, and look at that, right where I want it to go. There's a snag laying on the water there. Say I wanted to go to the left hand side of it, and just line it up between my face and the target, swing a pendulum till I'm comfortable, a bit more power, let it go, look at that, that's going to run right alongside that little snag on the left hand side, just as I wanted. The best tip I can give anybody wanting to learn how to cast underarm, practice, practice, practice and practice. Take the tips I've just told you and go outside, get a bucket of water or a, a, a tin or a balloon or whatever suits your fancy and just practice. Years ago I remember sitting in my backyard with a bucket of water, one after the other, after the other, after the other. Me and my mate Matt Hancock used to do it, we used to have competitions and that's probably why now I don't even think. It's like a second nature. I just walk up to the cast and then people say, whoa, how do you do that? Probably because after 30 years or so of doing it, I've gotten the hang of it. <laughs> You'd like to think so, wouldn't you? But there's an underarm tip for the day. Practice your underarm castings. Keep a nice straight line between your eye and where you want it to land and flick with a bit of power. And most of all, practice. Now let's go and see if we can actually catch a fish using this technique. Now this hole really does have all the ingredients, doesn't it? It's deep, it's shady, it's got overhanging vegetation with these trees and it's got fish. Oh, and it's a good fish too. Whoa, boy. I wasn't expecting that. Jeez, he's going for it. Oh, lovely fish. Jeez, he's putting up a fight. He's not even all that big. For the fight that he's putting up, I thought I was expecting to... Oh, he's hooked in the bloody tail, that's why. <laughs> I felt, oh, honest to God, thought I had about a 50 centimetre trout on here then. How am I going to land this without getting the hook in the finger? Ah, oh, come here, buddy. You're still a nice sized trout. Ah, you bastard. Look at that. Now, how did I know that was going to happen? Look at that. Fair into my finger. Now, the best thing to do is just get it straight out. Ah! Did you see that? Now, there's a lesson for everyone. A few lessons. The first lesson is if the fish feels like a submarine, it doesn't mean it's going to be. Because that fish was about 30 to 34 centimetres long. And he felt huge because he was hooked in the ass. Wild bait minnows hooking fish in the ass since 1871. But seriously, I knew there was going to be a risk to landing that fish because I thought if I'm not careful, I'm going to end up with a hook in the, in the finger here or in the hand or something. Just as I went to grab it, it moved, dug the hook into the top of my nail, the fish kicked, which drove the hook in and the fish took off. But I've had a lot of trips to the hospital. I've had plenty of hooks in my fingers. The bigger ones, yes, you've had to go to the hospital. These little ones off these little minnows, I find the best thing to do is straight away rip them out before you even have time to think. Now right now I've got a little bit of blood on my finger, it's not much, it's a stinging a little bit. But look at this, it's not the first thing to go into my skin this morning, you see that? I had to have a blood test. But there's the tip, I'll tell you about the blood test in a minute. Here's a tip for everybody. If you're out trout fishing and you get one of these tiny little hooks in your finger, or in your arm, or in your leg, and then I, as funny as it is, I actually got one stuck in my... Uh, perfectly toned and sculptured pectoral muscle once. Some might call it a man boob. The best thing, to, and that particular day, sorry, I, I sat there with a knife and I cut around it, there was blood everywhere, and I cut, 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 it hurt. I went, ah, 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 and I got it out eventually, and it hurt all day, and I ended up getting a bit of a bruise. I've since learned the best thing to do, if you're out in the bush like this, and you get a little one of these little hooks, they're not much bigger than a little needle, the best thing you can do is just go, ah, yank. Get it out within the first one or two seconds before you've got time to think. Get it out while the adrenaline is still high after having yourself hooked like I just did. That ordeal's over and I'm going to keep going fishing. Hooked in the backside. There you go. Now look at this. You see that? I know, they're a bit bright, isn't it? There it is. See that little spot? 
I went this morning to Dorovich Pathology in Wangaratta. Hello to the lovely staff at Dorovich. I went down and I saw the giant lady, the giant vampire lady, I should say, she wasn't a giant lady at all. Went down and saw the giant vampire, she was half vampire, half mosquito, I don't know, but she stuck that stinger in. She took about 14 litres of my blood and then wouldn't even give me a jelly bean. <laughs> but that's okay, I saved them, I wanted to save them for the kids anyway. <laughs> but seriously folks, let me tell you what I've done. I turned 40 a couple of months ago and I booked myself into the doctor for a checkup. And I thought, I'm 40, probably past my prime I suppose. I don't know, many might have hugged you. <laughs> Might be just time to have a checkup. There's been a bit of a cancer scare in the family the last 12 months. So I'm getting a heap of blood tests done. I'm getting my cholesterol checked. I'm getting my diabetes checked. I'm getting a PSA, which is prostate specific something or other, because there's a history of that. Just because I turned 40 and for no other reason, then I just think it's time to go and have a checkup. Because I don't want to kill over, because I don't want these trout celebrating my, uh, my departure. And let me just talk about my departure. If something does happen to me and I do depart, I want Wayne Gardner to be a pallbearer. And I want people to make sure that he doesn't carry the foot end. He has to carry the chest end because that's going to be bloody heavy. <laughs> if you're getting on in the years like me, folks, go and get yourself checked out. It doesn't hurt. Hopefully the blood test come back clear. Mmm. Ouch. Sort of fishing this one a little bit more upstream than I'd like to be. You can't get to it from downstream. Those partly to do with those big trees. Oh, got him. Look at that. Now, look at the size of that little trout. He is tiny. Come here, buddy. Let me get your hook out. Like, ah. I'm going to say, I don't want another hook in the finger. My other finger's still sore. Look at that tiny, weeny little brown trout. I'm going to chuck him straight back in the drink. Now, he's been out for all of about five seconds. He'll be fine. <laughs> he took the wild bait minnow. It's bloody near half the size of the fish. A hole like this you could get away with uh, casting overarm probably. But I still like to cast underarm. Oh, here comes one. Oh, got him. Oh, he's a nice fish too. He came out and I paused the little wild bait. Oh, he's jumped on the bow and I lose this fish if I'm not careful. No, look at this. <laughs> he came out and slowed down. I paused the wild bait and the moment I paused the minnow, he just went bang. Oh, give me hands a bit of a wet. Come here, buddy. You don't get a photo taken, then I'll put you back, eh? He is a beautiful. Yeah, whoa, 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 He is a beautiful. If he stops wiggling, he is like, ah, oh, you bugger. You silly bugger. Put in the other hand. See how that goes. He's all dirty now, but that's his own fault. But he's quite a nice coloured brown trout. Look at that. Really nice coloured fish. On the wild bait minnow, casting underarm. I'll quickly get the hooks out. And I'll put him back. There he is again, folks. I've got the hook out. Now I'm going to put him back in the drink. There he goes. I had a funny feeling he'd take off pretty quick. The moment he hit the water, phew, excellent. I didn't have to cast underarm there, but I did. I could have probably lobbed one overarm, but it's always good to keep casting underarm in positions like this where you don't have to go overarm. If you can go underarm, go underarm just to keep your eye in, if nothing else. So that when you do get to those overgrown holes like I have been fishing a lot of today, you can just flick and put your lure in the right spot.